Now here's a case where the arithmetize strategy might not work out super efficiently, but it's not a big deal. I wanna show you how I would think of this. First, I would start with x equals zero, my normal go-to for very simple uh, algebra situations like this. That would mean that this is zero minus zero minus six, so that's really just minus six. Again, I would do all this in my head. This is not particularly hard for me to think about in my head. But then as I go through the choices, if I put zero in for x squared, it basically means I'm gonna multiply these two numbers together. So one times negative six is negative six, that works. Two times negative three, mm, also negative six. Three times negative two, also negative six. Six times negative one, also negative six. Now, I, in a way, I would go through that entire process in my head on the test, but I guess I would realize really, really quickly that it's not gonna work, and I'm basically gonna need to pick a different number. Not the end of the world. It does not take long to just pick the next best number. Let's do x equals one. Now, this becomes one minus one minus six. Notice the benefit of one is we don't have to worry about those exponents at all. Just keeps everything simple. So one minus one is zero, zero minus six is still negative six. So our, our number is the same, but now when we plug into the choices, we're gonna plug in a one. And again, I can do this in my head, but I wanna show you why this works so well. If I'm doing this in my head, I see, okay, that's two times negative five, that's negative 10, right? So that doesn't work, I need it to be negative six. So this one is gonna be three times negative uh, two, that's negative six, so that works, but we're not done, we gotta make sure with everything. This one is gonna be th one plus three is four, one minus two is negative one, so that's negative four, that doesn't work. And this is gonna be seven times zero, so that doesn't work either. So very quickly, I have an answer, and I never had to worry about how the factoring would work. Maybe you're totally comfortable with this level of factoring, but a lot of people aren't. And so for you, this is a good example of a question where you can get it right using arithmetize that you might not be able to do with any, any algebra at all. Now we could enter all of these things into Desmos and compare the graphs and see uh, which one overlaps, uh, but that's also time consuming. I think it's better to get really comfortable with the way that zero and one work in many situations. They just have a tendency to knock a lot of algebra out. And then we're just doing a little bit of math in our head or we're writing it on the scratch paper, but at least we're doing math instead of kind of working with algebra and doing dealing with both the numbers and the variables. By getting rid of the variables, we only have to worry about the numbers. And that's easier because we can also pop that in a calculator if we absolutely need to. So this is definitely a case where on the test, I would have arithmetized. I'm too nervous that I'm gonna factor this thing incorrectly. I would much rather have the real concrete proof that I'm right using numbers instead of letters.